<laughs> I've always wanted to be a Jedi. You will like, share, and subscribe. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Abbas Khalili. Uh, we do a lot of fun stuff here. If cinematography, photography, and shenanigans is your idea of fun. Also, it's Diwali week, everyone. Uh, happy Diwali. If uh, you do not know, Diwali is the Indian festival of lights. And I thought this would be the perfect time to talk about some really cool photography techniques using light manipulation. Let's get into it. Okay, so what do you need to create a light painting photograph? You'll need a camera with a manual mode, so you should be able to control your shutter speed, ISO and aperture. You'll need something to stabilize the camera, so a tripod. And last but certainly not least, you'll need a movable light source. And it can be any kind of light source, um, a small LED, a torch. But if you are thinking about taking up the craft of light painting more seriously, Amazon now sells light painting brushes on their website. Or you could pick up something a little more versatile like this uh, lightsaber that I have. This is the Godox LC500R. I'll link it down below. It has color temperature LEDs on one side and RGB LEDs on the other. And it's actually a great versatile light if you're in the market for it. But at the same time, you can still get great results from just using colored gels and any household torch. So light painting is centered around the technique of long exposure photography where you keep your camera still and use a really slow shutter speed, like 5, 15, or even 30 seconds. And when you use a slow shutter speed, say 15 seconds, and you click the shutter, the camera takes a picture for 15 seconds. And in that time, if you take a light source and move it around in any kind of pattern, the camera records this movement in the form of these beautiful light trails. A couple of things to keep in mind is that when you shoot with such a slow shutter speed, you are actually letting in a lot of light. So you have to compensate with your aperture and your ISO. So keep your aperture anywhere between 8, 12 or whatever works for you and keep your ISO to the bare minimum. I would also recommend setting a timer on the camera because you do not want to be touching it at the moment the picture is being taken because the camera might shake and even the slightest vibration can ruin a long exposure image. And to take this concept to the next level, you could combine light painting with portrait photography. So have your subjects sit really still, move the light around them, and with a little bit of trial and error and some creativity, you could get something that looks like this. From a post-production point of view, I don't do much because these images are already so highly stylized. They're kind of like an in-camera edit. Um, but I still shoot in RAW just to have that extra data to work with in case I need it. The only two things I do is that I add exposure to my subject if there is one. And I drop the highlights of the whole image because that brings out the detail in the light trails you would have created. Once you get the technique down, it's all about getting creative with how you move your light source within your frame to create an interesting image. And I have to admit that I did take this opportunity to fulfill one of my oldest and most passionate dreams. Uh, and yeah, it's a little lame, but you know, hey, it's my channel, I can do what I want. So... Kami, Kami! So light painting is a very elegant art form. You know, the way the light flows, it's, it's just very graceful. It's kind of like listening to Beethoven or Vivaldi. Steel wool photography, on the other hand, is straight up metal. It's like listening to ACDC, Metallica or... Kiss. So for steel wool photography, this is what you'll need. Steel wool, which I got for 20 rupees in Vasanagar. A steel whisk, ideally with a steel handle like this and a hook. Something to tie to the whisk. Canon, please sponsor me. And a lighter. Now that we've brought pyrotechnics into the equation, please, please, please take every single precaution you can before attempting to do this. Do it in an open, non-flammable space and do not be reckless. If you are a youngling under the age of 18, then do this under parental supervision. Or better yet, just let someone older do this and you handle the camera. Just be safe so we can all have a good time. Steel wool photography uses the same technique as light painting. But in this case, you take some of the steel wool, you put it into the whisk, you tie it off with the rope that you have, you light the steel wool on fire and you start spinning it. And I gotta say, the results are epic. Oh 
Also, I'm convinced that this is how they shoot all the Doctor Strange movies. They just have one guy with one wrist going like this, like this, and Doctor Strange is like, you know, doing his jadoo. It's all, it's all practical effects. Trust me. And again, once you have this technique down, it's all about getting creative, taking this idea and making it your own. But that's it from me, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you end up using any of these techniques, do tag me in your pictures. I'd love to see them. As always, like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.